Hi, this is Captain Steve Tarrant at Maine Maritime Academy, and in this video I'm just going to be showing you uh, how to use the free surface correction table uh, that's given to you for the American Mariner. Before I do that, though, I just want to bring a quick something up to your attention. So far in stability class, we have been using these tables that we have commonly referred to as the blue pages. Okay, you've got this deadweight scale, uh, you had the uh, hydrostatic curves, and we had the cross curves. These three tables, so these three, you know, uh, they go, they, they are for one particular ship. And they're called the blue pages because when you, when you take your Coast Guard exam, they'll actually be in a book and they'll be blue, okay? Well, it turns out that for these free surface problems, we are on a different ship. We're on the American Mariner. And in that stability book, it, they are in what are called the white pages. And then there's also the salmon pages in that book as well because the book has three different things. What am I talking about here? You've been using these tables, but for free surface, you can't use these tables anymore. You got to use these tables, the ones that the Captain Slazes and I just gave to you the other day, okay? Assuming you're watching this video a couple days after. Uh, anyway, you were given these in class, okay? So these are this is the new hydrostatic table. This is the table of principal characteristics, okay? And uh, here as well is the, uh, this is the one we're going to be focusing on here in the next few minutes. Now, we didn't actually give you this. What we did was we plucked this number for the light ship out, and we wrote it for you down at the bottom of your sheet. So this light ship 7675 is this number, and this light ship VCG is this number okay we're just trying to save a little paper you don't need these at this point so captain slays has just wrote that down there for you okay which is very nice of him all right let's get to the to the meat of this video all right so we gave you this table now the instructions for how to use this table are right here all right uh, i'm going to just kind of walk you through these instructions and after i walk you uh, i'm going to explain how to use this table and after I do that, then you should read these instructions so that you understand them, okay? I'm going to be explaining verbally what's written down here. You should take the time to read this and make sure you understand it so that if you, you know, blank out on the middle of a test, you'll be able to um, do the problem. And also, you know, if in a couple of years when you become a chief mate, you haven't done stability in a while, you can just look at this, all right? So here's how it works. This first column lists the tanks on the vessel, okay? And they have names, DB1, double bottom 1, double bottom 1A, double bottom 2, double bottom 3. Double bottom 3 has got a center line tank, a port tank, and a starboard tank, okay? Uh, these are wing tanks. That's the center line tank, okay? DB4 also has a center line tank, okay? And it's got wing tanks as well, DB5, so on and so forth, okay? Um, this designator tells you if it's centerline, port, or starboard. And then this is the frame on the boat. So this is letting you know uh, where the tank is fore and aft longitudinally. Now, these four columns here are what we're going to be using for free surface correction. These last two here uh, we'll be using for some other stuff later on. So we don't need to worry too much about those right now. First thing you need to decide is uh, when you're doing these problems is is you'll be given um, uh, you'll be given tank capacities, and you'll need to come in here and decide uh, which one of these columns you're going to use. Okay, well, if you are loading fuel oil, you're going to be looking over here. If you're lo loading uh, salt water, you would look over here. All right, so let's say we loaded up uh, 48.2 tons into DB1, okay? Well, uh, 48.2, okay, that's how many tons we loaded up. What we'll do now to figure out if uh, what the free surface uh, uh, effect might be for that is we would come in here, we would find DB1. And we'd slide over here, and we would now look in these, con well, we're going to look in this fuel oil because it's fuel oil. We're not, we're not loading salt water in this case. And it turns out that 48.2 is 97% capacity, okay? Well, if it's 48.2, that means I'm at 97% capacity. Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use this, these two columns to extract my I value. I is the free surface constant, okay? It's also the moment uh, for, that, uh, for that tank uh, if it's slack. 
Well, it turns out that 48.2 was 97%. Now, I've got two columns over here for I. I that's slack, I that's 97%. Well, my tank's at 97%. So I'm going to take the I value for 97%. So in this case, if I had 48.2 tons in DB1, my, my uh, uh, I value, my moment of inertia for that slack tank, okay, my free surface constant would be 67. And that is foot tons. But what if instead of 48.2, let's say uh, in DB1, I instead had, let's say, uh, 30 tons. Okay, don't laugh at my numbers. Well, DB1, I come over here, fuel oil, and turns out that 30 tons is less than 97%. Hmm. Well, it's less than 97%. That means that I am slack. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to go to this column. I'm going to go to this column. And look at that. You see, there's more moments. Okay. So it turns out that if I have less than 97% capacity filled, I'm going to be what's called slack. Okay, so in that case, if I was 30, I would have 106 for a uh, I value. What if instead of 30, let's say I was at 20? Okay, don't laugh. Well, I come over here again, 20, DB1. Well, 20 is less than 48.2, which means I'm slack, which is... 106 okay what if i was at uh uh 48.5 okay 48.5 i come over here and i say oh well first of all i overloaded and i'm risking the possibility of having a spill if my uh, fuel oil. Uh, okay, so I better tell the captain that we have overfilled this tank because maybe we can just shift some of that into another tank we haven't filled yet. But anyway, if I'm at 48.5, that is greater than this value, which actually means that we would be above 97% and we would consider that full. So if you're greater than 97%, there actually is no free surface correction. Well, what if instead of that, what if I had no volume in my tank? Okay, well, if I have nothing, then I, am, I have no free surface uh, correction to be dealt with. So I can get rid of that. So if my tank is greater than 97% or zero, then there is no free surface correction. If it is 97%, I use this column to get my, uh, my constant, okay? If I am less than 97%, I use this column to get my constant. And what I'll have to do then is, after I decide the constant for this particular tank, I have to then figure out the constant for this tank, and for that tank, and for that tank. Remember, this one's actually got three tanks, the center line and the two wings. And I have to plug, I have to get these numbers for these various things, and at the end I have to add them all up. If you don't understand what I just said, you can watch the next two videos, or the next video that shows you how to calculate the free surface correction. Okay, and that's on YouTube as well. Uh, and that's all I really want to say about this at the moment.